Major breaking news out of California. The state of California and Governor Gavin Newsom have essentially declared the entire state a so-called sensitive place, which, as you know, is a euphemism for government-mandated gun-free zones. This is obviously an end run around the Supreme Court's decision in NYSERPA versus Bruin. And by the way, in November of 2021, almost one year before NYSERPA versus Bruin was decided, you heard it here first on the Four Boxes Diner. The, the sensitive place loophole, if you will, was exactly how the anti-gunners were going to try to get around the Serpa versus Bruin and their defeat there. And that's exactly what has been going on. But don't worry, the cavalry is on the way. The Firearms Policy Coalition and several other gun rights groups have already sued the state of California over this unconstitutional sensitive places law. Let's talk about all of this when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Diner, proud American gunner, constitutional attorney. Remember the United States Supreme Court bar and author of First They Came for the Gun Owners, the A to Z guide of how the anti-gunners intend to take away our rights and how you can stop them. All right, folks. So Governor Gavin Newsom signed into law the long-awaited quote-unquote sensitive places law, which essentially declares the vast majority of California a sensitive place, which, as you know, is a euphemism for government-mandated gun-free zones. So essentially, California threw a little hissy fit having lost Nizerpa versus Bruin along with New York and the other anti-gun states. And they decide to, if they have to give out concealed carry permits to ordinary proles, to ordinary peons and subjects such as us ourselves, American gun owners, well, okay, they're going to get back at the Supreme Court and they're going to get back at law-abiding Americans who want to carry guns to defend themselves and their family. And they're going to get back at us by declaring everything a sensitive place. So even if you have a concealed carry permit, it is rendered utterly useless because you cannot bring your gun anywhere without going to prison for bringing a gun into a quote-unquote sensitive place. Now, this is clearly unconstitutional because, as you know, the U.S. Supreme Court in NYSERPA versus Bruin talked about sensitive places, and they specifically said that the only three sensitive places in American history at the time of the founding okay, in Bruin, were three. They were polling places, which, as you know, is like one day for a few hours, once every year or so, very limited in nature, polling places. Then you have legislative assemblies. Now, that's like the state house, uh, could be the U.S. Capitol, and uh, legislative assemblies. That's what we're talking about. Again, a very limited geographical place, also surrounded by comprehensive security. And, of course, you have courthouses. Again, Courthouses are protected by comprehensive security. Now, the one unifying feature that uh, polling places, legislative assemblies, and courthouses all had in common at the time of the founding is they had men there with firearms to protect the people. In the context of courthouses, you had armed bailiffs who had firearms you, to, to protect the people. So basically, you were able to go into the courthouse without your gun because there were people there who were going to protect you with their guns um, likewise, in the context of legislative assemblies, there you had um, various types of people, uh, not bailiffs per se, but you had a chief of staff type places, uh, you had sheriff type people, again, you had individuals who were specifically there uh, to protect the chambers from the deliver you know from people and to protect the deliberations that were ongoing in those places. Those are the three things that Nice Surfer versus Bruin specifically laid out as sensitive places. So anything that California does has to somehow be analogous, sufficiently analogous to those three places. Now has California successfully done that? The answer is 100 percent no because specifically the laws and there's a lot much more than what I'm about to read here, but the laws that have already been challenged right now in a lawsuit by several organizations. I'm just going to talk about one lawsuit. There's a series of lawsuits already. So the one lawsuit I'll talk about is the one in Central District of California. This is the case of Antonio versus Bonta. Uh, the organizations, the gun rights organizations in the Antonio case include the Orange County Gun Owners PAC, the San Diego County Gun Owners PAC, California Gun Rights Foundation, and the Firearms Policy Coalition. Uh, they have all brought this lawsuit in the Central District of California and immediately challenged this sensitive places law. Specifically, they laid out and said that indeed this violates the Second Amendment because you cannot declare everything a sensitive place. That is not from my lips. That is actually from the lips of the United States Supreme Court. And I'll put a link at the end of this uh, to a video I did in November of 2021. Now, November of 2021, mind you, is almost a year before the Supreme Court issued the Nyserpa versus Bruin decision in June of 2022. And in November 2021, I specifically predicted this is exactly what the anti-gunners were going to do. They were going to get their butt spanked in Bruin, and the way they were going to get around it is to try to declare everything a sensitive place. 
Happily, the U.S. Supreme Court anticipated this as well and basically said, yeah, there's three sensitive places at the time of the founding that we presume to be sensitive places and none others. And that, again, is polling places, courthouses, and legislative assemblies. So it's up to California to show that what they're trying to declare a sensitive place is analogous to those three places. And it's going to be a stretch because if you actually look at what they're talking about, here is essentially the list of what's been declared as a sensitive place by California. That would be healthcare facilities, public transit and mass transit facilities, places where, li where liquor is sold, public gatherings, parks, such as public parks and athletic facilities, private property, I'm sorry, public property controlled by the State Department of Parks and Recreation, gambling establishments, stadiums and arenas, public libraries, amusement parks, and zoos and museums. Okay, these are all toasty mosty at the end of the day is my guess because uh, we know that none of these things at the time of the founding or anything even analogous to these were deemed gun government mandated gun-free zones. And as you know, at the time of the founding, when there was a concern that a particular spot was subject to potential attack, for example, an attack by the Native Americans or the Indians, the way the Americans at the time of the founding handled it was they actually told you you had to bring a gun to those quote-unquote sensitive places. At the time of the founding, when you had a sensitive place, with the exception of the three we've talked about, the way they treated things that were legitimate targets by various enemies, criminals, the Indians, whomever, the Tories, it doesn't matter. They actually had you bring your guns to those places. They did the absolute opposite of what modern day liberals, modern day anti-gunners are trying to do today. And as you know, Cesar Bacarius said, and remember Adams and Jefferson both wrote this down. He said specifically that criminals that are unwilling to follow the laws associated with no murder, no rape, no robbery, they're clearly not going to follow laws associated with gun control or gun regulations because why would they? If, if they don't give a hoot about murder, rape, or robbery laws, they're not going to give a hoop about, hoot about gun control laws. And that was not an NRA slogan from the 21st century. That was Cesar Beccaria, an Italian Enlightenment philosopher at the time of the founding, who both Thomas Jefferson and John Adams loved and discussed and uh, you know, signed off on and, and wrote his work down and inspired them in, in various contexts, including in adopting the Second Amendment. Now, that is why, contrary to what the anti-gunners are doing in the 21st century, where if they don't want you to have a gun somewhere, they simply label it a sensitive place. That's not going to fly at the end of the day. Now, we know it's not going to fly because the Supreme Court has already said you cannot declare everything a sensitive place. Now, before we get to the specific areas and how they might break down analytically, I should note that this bill takes effect on January 1st of 2024. That's according to this complaint in the Antonio case. And it goes on to say they actually do a good job in this complaint. It's a very powerful complaint, I think. Uh, they point out some of the language of showing that Gavin Newsom has a motive to get around Bruin because these are some of the words that he used to describe the Bruin ruling. He called it, quote, a bad ruling, close quote. He called it, quote, an absurdity, uh, among other things. So given all of this stuff, it sure, sure shows his motive to try to get around the ruling. And again, we've gone through that quick list of different places that are they're trying to claim to be sensitive places, but I don't think it's going to work. But the good news is, as you know, step back for a second analytically. There's two types of Second Amendment cases in the world. You know, the old saying is that Gaul was broken into three parts. That's what the Romans used to say, since we all have to think about the Roman Empire uh, every day now. So I'll try to work that in to help you out in that context. So yes, Gaul was broken into three parts. And I think the way to think about Second Amendment cases is they're broken into two parts. You either have arms ban cases where a gun or a magazine is being banned or the sale of it is being banned. Those ban cases are governed by the Heller in common use test. That's part one, or that's category one of Second Amendment cases. Everything else falls into category number two. Because these are lawsuits dealing with sensitive places or gun-free zones, they fall into category number two because they don't involve arm ban cases. And in light of that, you do a you do the Bruin methodology as opposed to the Heller methodology, even though Bruin and Heller really have the same methodology. But just to keep it clear in your mind, you follow Bruin specifically. And what Bruin says, of course, is that you start with the text of the Second Amendment. Well, we know that the text of the right of the people to keep and bear arms is implicated by this ban because it's saying that the plaintiffs and the Californians who have concealed carry permits already are not allowed to bear arms in these places. And since the text of the Second Amendment says you have the right to bear arms and you're being prevented from bearing arms in these places, the text of the Second Amendment is implicated. Once the text of the Second Amendment is implicated, you know what happens. It's very important. The burden shifts. The burden shifts to the government, in this case, California and Gavin Newsom and Rob Bonta, 
to come forth with historical analog laws at the time of the founding that justify the modern day gun control law they're trying to uphold or sustain. So here, that's exactly what's going on. So again, here, sensitive places, the text is implicated, the burden is now shifted to California. They have to come forth with historical analogs to justify that they can ban guns historically, as a matter of history, in places like buildings, real property, parking areas under, under the control of the public and private hospital affiliates, anything involving mental health, uh, real property and parking areas under the control of uh, where, you, where they buy and sell alcohol, buses and trains and other forms of transportation paid for with public funds, and so on and so on. But if you go back to the founding, again, the Supreme Court's already said there's really only three places, and one of the critical things that made those three places unique was whether it was a sergeant at arms for the purposes of legislative assemblies, whether it was a bailiff for the purposes of courthouses or general arm, uh, general police specifically for a limited day and a limited time for polling places, you had some form of comprehensive security that's being provided to you from the government specifically to you. You can't just label something a sensitive place. The government has to actually act on it and demonstrate it's sensitive. And the way to do that is they have to provide for comprehensive security. And there is simply no way in the state of California where they cannot, not, cannot even keep or are choosing not to keep the streets of San Francisco clean and safe that they're possibly going to provide comprehensive security for any of these places that I've just described. So they're going to ultimately fail in this case as I see it. But again, the burn system to California, they're going to have to come back and say specifically that there are quote unquote well-established and representative historical analogs that show that what they're trying to declare as a sensitive place is indeed a sensitive place. And I think that is going to be a stretch. So we'll continue to cover these lawsuits, including this Antonio case very carefully, but I'll just sum up this video with a quote here, very powerful from the uh, Citizens Committee for the Right to Bear Arms, Director Andrew Gottlieb. This is what he said in a press release about uh, this new sensitive places law out of California. He says, quote, Gavin Newsom continues to blame gun owners for problems he is not addressing as the state's chief executive. Instead of cracking down on law-abiding gun owners by signing Senate Bill 2, which restricts lawful concealed carry, he should be focusing his attention on the people who are committing the crimes. And by the way, 18th century Italianment, Enlightenment, Italian Enlightenment philosopher and criminologist Cesar Beccari would completely agree with the 21st century statement of Andrew Gottlieb in this context. The reality is that it's not the law-abiding uh, you know, gun owners that just want to protect themselves and their family that's committing these crimes. These are the people that you know, politicians like Gavin Newsom are letting into our country over our borders. Uh, they are letting them out of prison with no bail, uh, no, no, no bail requirements, uh, and they're simply siding in many respects with the criminal class over the law abiding as to their motive. I will let you speculate to that. We can talk about that in a future video, but for now, it's pretty clear that notwithstanding the fact California does not seem interested in enforcing the law against actual violent criminals with actual violent criminal records, he seems more focused on pre pre preventing Americans from being able to protect themselves in a state where it doesn't appear as the police are able to, whether they're willing or not is a separate question, but it doesn't appear as that the police are being allowed to do their job to protect people. People, and even if they were allowed to do their job, it's unclear if they could do so because, as you know, the old saying, the old saying that says, when seconds count, police are minutes away, that is just a truism. It's nothing against the police or law enforcement or anything like that. It's just the reality is that when the criminals attack, the police are usually too far away and you just don't have time to get them there no matter what because for a whole host of reasons, everything from slow 911 calls or maybe you don't have the ability to call 911 or maybe they're on the other side of town responding to another call, whatever it is, at the end of the day, we as American gun owners, and we as Americans are our own responder, whether we like it or not. And Gavin Newsom here is trying to make it harder for us to do our job as first responders for ourselves, our families, and our communities. All right, folks, hope you learned a little bit something here at the Four Boxes Diner about uh, the California law. Don't forget to follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner, and we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner.